Mine Colonies is a Minecraft mod that allows you to make your own town with citizens, which are different to villagers that you have in the vanilla game, that will go ahead and do just about everything for you. You can automate things such as mining, lumberjacks, fishing, farming, pretty much anything you can think of in the game. They even build the buildings for you. And when you get to the later stage stuff, you can even have them traveling around in little mine carts and things like that, like they've got roads, and you can have a really hustling, bustling city. So in today's video, what I want to do is just introduce you guys to the mod and also tell you how to get started. Because once you've got the fundamentals that I show you in this video down, you'll be able to build through and build the town as big as you like. And believe me, you can go big with these things. If you guys are interested in Mine Colonies, please do like and subscribe because I do a lot of Mine Colonies content, both on my channel here and also on my Twitch, which will be linked down in the description where I live stream Mine Colonies very often. Also, I do have plans to launch a Mine Colonies server soon in the next couple of months with other content creators. And guess what, guys? You can join this. You can actually join us and play with me and other content creators and be in our videos and that type of thing what's also playing mine colonies so it's gonna be a really cool server i think and i'm very excited about it if you're interested in that again like and subscribe and also uh you can look at my discord which is linked down in the description anyway let's jump into how to get started on mine colonies so the first thing to really think about is where exactly you want to settle your colony because in mine colonies you will have all different types of terrain generations and all different biomes to what you're used to in vanilla and they all come with different advantages and disadvantages one big thing to keep in mind is that you will need flat areas for all of your buildings so in certain biomes like this for example you would have to do a lot of clearing out before you were able to build buildings uh, in these areas and that can also be the same with some of the big tree biomes and the big hilly biomes and that sort of thing so you definitely want to take that into consideration because otherwise you might find that you're doing a lot of time in clearing areas rather than actually just getting on with playing the game the other thing to think about a little bit is what build style you want to go for so mine colonies has all different kinds of themes you can build things like sandstone medieval and when I say medieval, there's all different ones for like birch and for oak and that sort of stuff. And it has futuristic ones like Space Wars and some unique ones, things like the Asian style and that sort of thing. So I recommend if you load up a creative world, you can play around with a few of these different designs and see which ones you like and which ones you don't. And once you know what that is, have a think about what resources you're going to need. I mean, a good example would be if you're doing a sandstone build, then having a big desert either nearby or as the actual area you're building your town in is probably essential. Otherwise, you're going to find the game very frustrating particularly as you progress through to bigger builds that will require lots of those resources. So once you've found yourself a nice area to settle your town, the first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself either a supply ship or a supply camp. So the supply ship is made like this with five boats and the supply camp needs five chests. You can make either one, it really doesn't matter. They'll both give you the resources that you need. So what we'll do is go ahead and have a look at each of these right now. And the other thing I would recommend is that you make yourself up a build tool. Now I'll show you the build tool as well grab one of these and the build tool is pretty easy to make the recipe for it is very basic you just need two sticks and one cobble but it will allow you to reposition these things when you place them so if we go for a supply camp first of all if we were to place that on the ground here uh, what we can do is by using the build tool we can right click and then we can select up here the different styles of it so again we have all different styles of this so you can go for whatever you want for your town you can rotate it using these arrows here and you can also flip it so you can see right here this is the orientation of this if i press this arrow here it flips it and just puts it on the other side so you can do this as well if you want to now as far as the supply camp or supply ship it doesn't actually have to be near your town you could build it completely far away from your town if you wanted all that's important is the blocks that you'll get from it now as you can see from here you've got like all kinds of blocks you could get like in terms of the wood and the wool and that sort of thing and the hay there but also it'll have stuff in the chest so we'll come on to that in a second the other option as I mentioned is the supply ship so if we go down here to the, near the water this will need to be placed in water so if we place it right there here we go again we can use our build tool here and you can look through all the different ones that you have available to you and choose whichever one you like the most. You can see there's water there as part of the build because it's showing it does need to be in water. Uh, but what you can do is, let's say we want to move that and get it kind of connected up here like this. Uh, I don't know, I guess like that and like that. So this is the height difference here. So that's lower and that's higher if you're wondering what I'm doing there. And uh, once you're happy with whatever it is that you want, you simply right click the build tool again and hit the tick button. Okay, so the issue I was having was the supply ship didn't have enough water around it. So if we come out to the deep ocean a little bit here, sometimes these things can be a bit finicky to place. And this is why I highly recommend that you do have the build tool. So if you come like right out into the ocean, I'm exaggerating this a little bit. You guys will be able to get it closer in your worlds, but then we can at least build it there. So once you come on board of these ships, you you want to check everywhere because like there could be all different things hiding around and each design will have different things hiding in them as well so uh there's definitely like so here we go we got some birch in there 
some basic tools to get you started so that can be useful if you explore through the ship as well you'll find all different things so in the barrels here we've got some food uh we've got there's some water bottles as well and uh, a little bit of cobble and stone so all these things to help get you started even the bed is kind of useful we're actually going to come onto the bed in a bit more detail later on uh, now at the back here in this cabin here this is where we're going to have the important thing which is the town hall and at this stage it does actually give you a build tool so you might already have one if you're doing it like i've done it the other thing i would say is be sure to break blocks and look around now i don't know about this sh uh, specific ship but i know on some of the ships when i was breaking around there are actually gold blocks in the ship so you definitely want to have a little look around as well um, now it depends you might not want to destroy your ship but if you're needing gold or that sort of thing on some of them you can definitely find some useful resources there so that's the supply ship or the supply camp as I say, it doesn't have to be where your town is going to be, but it will give you the all-important town hall block. So, once you have your town hall, the next thing to do is think about where exactly you want to place it. Now, it's good practice to place the town hall where you think the center of your town is going to be. Now, you can see I'm flying around in creative mode here, and that does make your life a lot easier. Now, obviously, you, you're probably going to want to play in survival mode, which is fine, but what you can do is press escape and open to land with cheats on, and then put yourself into either creative or spectator mode and have a look around. It does make a lot of things easier throughout the game when you're doing all the building buildings and that sort of thing. Uh, what we're going to do for now is just choose an arbitrary place and just say we want to build our town hall here. So we right click with the builder's wand and we go and select the town hall and as we're in a desert let's assume that we are going to do like a sandstone town hall. Now what you can do and again this is where the creative mode sort of helps you out is you can sort of have a look at this thing and you can see how big it is and where it needs to be. Again you can rotate it and flip it and all that good stuff if that's what you want to do. The other thing you can do is see what it's going to look like at level 5 by doing that and you can select all the different levels but I recommend having a look at what it's going to be at level 5 because it will give you a good idea as to exactly how big this thing is going to end up and then you'll know like if this is a good location for it or not now we're going to assume that we're pretty happy with this location so then what you want to do is right click and tick and what you will get is this so you see right here the town hall block has now been placed and in chat we've got the announcement there to say start your colony so place a town hall using the build tool and it even tells you that you can change the position of it all you need to do is right click on the town hall block and create a new colony so once you've done that then this will be the change you'll get this right here so this is the construction tape that will go around the town hall block like that and at this stage now you will get the citizens beginning to arrive and they will literally just turn up at your colony if you just wait now you shouldn't have to wait more than a couple of minutes for your first couple of citizens to arrive at this stage you'll get up to four citizens you will get four just over a period of time um, to get more and that sort of thing is a little bit more uh, advanced and we'll talk about that and I've sort of done episodes on that and that sort of thing as well uh, but for this one for just getting started we're not gonna worry about that today but yeah you'll get four citizens that will turn up once your town hall is built like this and here we have it our first citizen has arrived Reynold I Gomfrey so they'll get a random name and they'll turn up and if you right click them you can see their stats now these plus and minuses are because i'm in creative mode you can't increase their stats like this in game there are ways to increase their stats in game and again i've made videos about this but yeah just to mention that and so here you go and they've got like their health and their hunger and all that sort of thing now if we go onto the town hall we right click you've got all different things here that you can use like it'll just show you all different things about your citizens and about what's going on um, and so this is one of the important things right is the happiness of your town as it sort of develops these are the things that are going to affect it and I'll, there's not a lot you can do to start off in terms of happiness right because a lot of stuff like making sure you got food for the um, colonists and making sure you got guards that sort of thing take time but one thing you can do at the start is keep your citizens safe so there's a couple easy ways to do that the first thing is to try and light up an area around your town hall as big as possible now it doesn't need to be huge because the second way I'm going to tell you which is a much easier thing to do is as soon as it gets to night time make sure you sleep as early as you can each night and that'll prevent mobs from spawning and in the morning it's not a bad idea to just have a quick look around particularly in the early days when you've only got like a town hall to worry about not a big town to sort of look over and just make sure that there's no mobs nearby attacking your citizens and that will obviously keep them alive the other thing they are going to need is food so early game to give them food you simply want to right click them go to their inventory and then put food from your inventory up into theirs just drop it in like you would with a chest or that sort of thing and then they will be able to eat and that'll make them happy as well so that's a couple of important things. Now, the other thing about the town hall at this stage that you can do, uh, first of all, you can rename your colony. So you can call it whatever you like um, by doing it that way. Uh, but the other thing you can do is, if we look down through here, is if you're on a server, first of all, you can add players to the colony like this. So you can type in their IGN and hit add, and then you can have different roles and things. Again, that's a little bit more advanced, but I will mention it just in case you're on a server. Um, but this is the bit I want to talk about, the settings. So first of all, worker hiring mode is on automatic. I like to do that as manual. And what that means 
means is then when you make your buildings, like let's say you're making a miner and you've built the miner building, you can then choose who you want to be the miner. And because citizens have different stats, you want to choose someone that has the best stats for that job. So I highly recommend that you do that. Uh, the other thing on settings you can do is edit this here, whether kids will be born or not. You won't have to worry about that early game, but still, that's something you can do. And you can turn on or off help messages to help you with that as well. The other thing I like to have manual though is this. So these are the two changes I always make early game, put both of these things to manual. Again, I like to choose who's living in the houses. The reason being is because if you want to have children, you need to make sure there's a guy and a girl in the house. And uh, if you want to avoid that, you can either go into settings and turn children being born off, or just put two guys or two girls in the house and then that won't happen. So that's a few things their early game about the citizens one little point though if you are trying to protect them and sleep as early as possible in the top left of the screen here you'll see i've got the mini map and at 6 33 p.m or 18 33 if you're on a 24 hour clock that is the earliest you can sleep so as soon as it hits that that's when you want to go ahead and sleep so with citizens arriving in your town obviously now you want to start building your town up and the way you're going to do that the first thing you need is what's called the builder's hut there you go and to do that you can see here you just need any type of vanilla door surrounded by any type of logs or planks i should say uh, in a crafting bench and it will give you a builder's hut so we're going to go ahead and uh, grab our builder's hut from the creative mode here there we go. And to place that down, it's the same as before. You can use your build tool like this. Go ahead and right click. Now, when you hover over the build tool, you see this grid that comes here. This is the size of your town borders right now. So any buildings that you place do need to be put inside the town border. So we can put our builders up, say, down here like this. And you don't have to keep the theme. We could go for a completely different builder site if we wanted to. Um, so we've been doing sandstone, but we could say we want a mesa builder site. Of course, bear in mind, you will need the materials to build it. Uh, but that is completely doable if that's what you want. And here it is at level one. Again, we can rotate this. We can flip it and all that sort of stuff. We can see it at level five if we want to see what's going to be a good fit and where it looks good and all that sort of stuff. But this is the first thing you need because your builder is going to be your first worker so that it can go ahead and build everything else in your colony. So again, when you're happy with the placement of it, you can go ahead and tick that and uh, then it will be placed like this with the construction tape around it. At that stage, go over to the actual height itself, right click it, go onto build options and select a builder. Now to do that, what you'll need to do is first hire the builder by going to manage workers and choosing someone to hire. Now this is why I wanted it manual because you can see here, like two of these are on three, but Gillian here or Gillian, whatever that is, is on four and yeah, the others are all on three. So Gillian's definitely gonna be the better builder. It's in green because that's the main um, skill that you're looking at. So we're gonna hire Gillian, Gillian, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then we can hit recall and she'll come on over here and her skin has now changed. She's wearing a builder's outfit. So that will happen uh, once you hire the workers, right? So once they have a job rather than just being citizens. And at that stage, then you can go to the build options, select Gillian and hit build building. And she will get on with building that building. Now, what she will need, of course, is all the resources to build the building. So we're now gonna take a look at a few early game items that can be really useful, uh, including one that tells you all the resources that are needed to build any building. Okay, so those useful early game items. First up, we have the resource scroll. And and you can see the recipe for it right here. It's pretty simple to make, you just need a couple of cows that you find. Now what you can do is go ahead and go over to your builder's hut, shift and right click, and it says in the chat right there, link resources for builder's hut at Kaizen's Colony. Now when I right click this, you'll see it tells me here everything that I need. Now this is showing green saying that I have it all simply because I'm in creative mode, so I literally have infinite of everything, right? Um, but what it will do for you if you're in survival mode is it'll all be blacked out if you don't have it, and then it'll show as green once the resources are given to the builder. So it's just a list basically of everything that you need. The other thing that's quite useful is the clipboard. And if we hover over that and press R, we can get the recipe for it. I thought we could do that. Okay, it doesn't work there. Um, I'll just put it into here. It does normally work. I think it's just because I'm in creative mode. But basically, there's the clipboard right there. Okay, so again, that's simple to make. Um, now, what the clipboard will do, again, you want to go to the town hall block this time and shift right click. And it says there, no stream requests on the clipboard. If we right click this, it tells you all the requests that your citizens have at any given time. So this is useful throughout the game to tell you like, oh, your miner needs a new pickaxe or your lumberjack needs a new axe or something like that for them to be working. Now, I mentioned the bed before. Of course, you want to have a bed. You want to set your point obviously somewhere near town and sleep whenever it is as soon as you can right at the 6 33 p.m but another useful item in fact a very useful item is the sleeping bag and i always have one of these in my inventory literally just three wool will do this now what this does is when you're walking around if it turns to night time and you have a little sleep on the floor uh, what will happen is your bed will still be your spawn point so if you're out exploring or something like that, you can keep sleeping each night and you'll still have the spawn point back where you want to be nice and safely. The other thing as well 
if you are trying to make sure these citizens aren't being attacked by monsters and so you're sleeping like as soon as you can every single night then when you're going around building your town and stuff you don't have to keep running back to your bed so wherever you are you can quickly lie down have a sleep and then go again so sleeping bag is very useful another really useful item are the waystones now waystones are not early game items in terms of making them because you can see here they require i mean the obsidian's not too bad it's the warp stone it's the ender pearls and even the emeralds early game are a little bit of a faff right but that being said you can find them. Now, just by chance, there are actually a couple around here. So here's a sandstone one right here. So we've got that one right there. And we've got this one over here as well. Now, what we'll do as well is with just a stone pick. In fact, maybe this even works with a wooden pick. I'm going to try it with you guys right now. If I go uh, into game mode survival, I think you can pick these up if you just mine away at them. With a, stone, uh, with a wooden pick, it is pretty slow, but it is going to work, right? And so you can pick them up and move them. Now, the good thing about this is you can go ahead and put them wherever you like. So right at the center of my town, I can go and have one of these, and I can name it whatever I want. So I might call this one TH for Town Hall. Hit Done, and then be sure to right-click it, and you'll get the activated waystone in chat here, and a bit of a graphic change there as well. Now, let's say this waystone right here, we've picked this waystone up, and we've gone exploring, and we found a dark oak biome, for example, right? And we love this dark oak biome because we need a lot of dark oak for our build. Well, what we can do then is use it to teleport to and from. So if I hit TH, I'm straight back to my town hall, and then what I want to go back to, I mean, obviously in this case, it's not a dark oak biome, but what would be if you placed it there? You can just teleport between them. So early game, this is going to make you get in resources so much quicker. So when you're out traveling, do be sure to keep an eye out for them. You can see the three different ones you can get here. The normal stone waystones, which are often found in mountainous areas. The mossy ones are really difficult to find. I haven't found many of those. Uh, but the sandy ones are often found in deserts, and you'll see them. Now, here we go. 1832, 1833. Boom, I'm in bed. So there you go. As soon as my clock in the top left, I changed to 1833. I know I can sleep. In my sleeping bag, I pick it back up, I haven't reset my spawn point, and I can see here now all my citizens are nice and safe, there's no monsters nearby. Now you'll notice here they've all come to the town hall, so at the evenings that is what they will do until you get to a stage where they have houses, they'll come to the town hall. Which is why I said if you light up an area around your town hall, that is a good way of keeping your citizens safe, because obviously there won't be monsters spawning in that area. Okay, so our builder's hut is now complete, I obviously did this in creative mode, so I actually need to hire um, Gillian back, there we go. Um, but So we've got a builder's hut, and we've got a builder ready to go and you'll actually see in chat it does give you uh, an idea of what you should do so it says you should get a forester or a miner and a tavern to house your citizens now the tavern i'll show you here is a fantastic block uh, of building i should say really early game this is how you make it right you need a bit of wood and also a barrel which is just a bit more wood so pretty easy to make early game now the good thing about the tavern is it will house four citizens and as you can see we have four citizens here early game so one way of keeping them happy if you build a tavern is that you can then assign all of them to the tavern uh, by right clicking on the tavern block and assigning each citizen to it so that'll mean that they're pretty happy because they've got a house and all that sort of stuff the other thing good thing about the tavern is you'll get travelers that will turn up in your town now if we go over to here and we've got here we've got agnes you see her skills here are all like threes and twos and ones when you build a tavern the travelers that come to your town they'll have skills up in their 20s and sometimes even higher than that again so that is a fantastic resource to have to get some really good citizens early game now in terms of resources i would say there are a few things you want to be thinking about doing early game first of all is the miner so if you look at a miner here um, actually it's called a different thing uh miner's hut or something like that uh so if I find that let's just call it mine i think it might be mine there we go um so here we go you, you see the recipe for it. it's pretty simple to make but then you can hire someone and they will go and do a load of mining for you so that'll get you a lot of the early game stone and some ores and stuff that you need as well the other good thing can be to get a lumberjack um, which is actually now called a forester's hut. I've got to remember this. Forester's hut, there you go. And this is how you make the forester's hut. Now, by placing one of those down and placing down some saplings nearby, that will mean that you'll get automated wood production. So again, if you're building particularly out of like some of the medieval styles, like medieval birch or whatever, you can have a birch farm and your workers will just go ahead and do all that stuff for you. So we're going to have a look at one of those in action. And uh, what I'll do is come over here and the number one that you can look at uh, just to mention are the farms right so you can build a farm and you can build a field with the farm as well now because this is one of the more complex ones this is the one i'm going to demonstrate on camera right now so we'll go ahead and grab ourselves the farm block and oh my goodness um all right so farm unfortunately it gives me a lot of stuff here but there's the farm and we're also going to want a field and incidentally the recipe for a field is as such here we go now, in terms of farms and fields, I recommend early game you do a few vanilla farms to start you off. First of all would be wheat, sugar, 
cows and also wool now the reason for that the wheat is to feed the cows and also feed your citizens with bread and that sort of thing and the cows eventually will feed your citizens with the cooked meat but also the leather from the cows is very important for the bookshelves because you will need a lot of bookshelves in the buildings which brings me nicely on to the sugarcane farm the sugarcane farm again is going to give you all the paper um, which is very important obviously for the bookshelves but also for your villager trades when you get into doing like a villager reader that sort of thing and getting loads of emeralds which can really help you with other resources so it's useful for that the wool of all colors you'll be surprised how many mine colonies buildings require wool of different colors and you might need like one red or one blue or two yellow or something like that and also lots of carpets and things so i highly recommend getting a wool farm for each uh, color of sheep that you can get as soon as possible now i've done a tutorial on a wool farm if you guys want to see it and i built one in my mine colonies world it is incredibly simple to build and will give you every single color of wool and it's like it works completely passively so you don't have to do anything for it if you're interested in that there will be a link in the description description um, so to help us out with the farming as I said we are going to make a farmer here and we're going to go ahead and place this down and let's see we want to select the farmer block and let's go to I'll just show you guys a few different designs so let's try medieval dark oak farm right, let's bring this up here here we go and this is what it looks like at level five here we go <laughs> so you see here like you get all different designs and stuff like if I just go to like a medieval oak that's different again and this one has like a windmill and stuff so it's incredibly cool the things that you can do with this uh, what we're going to do is uh, let's see let's just choose like let's go for like a Nordic farm let's get it to level one there we go where we're going to be starting out um, so this is quite a big build for a level one actually um, so I'm actually going to choose sorry I clicked in the wrong place there so I'm actually going to choose a bit of a smaller one to get started we'll just do the sandstone one here we go all right so let's go ahead and place this down on the floor here somewhere uh, just try and find like, a good location for it now what I'm going to do is just build it in the creative way which is by clicking down here and there's our little farm built very good uh, so now what we need to do is nearby to this farm we're going to want to place a field down and this field is where the um, worker is going to work so what we can do is go ahead and place you down let's say here and then what you want to do obviously is have the area around that as dirt uh, that, and water as well so that it can be hoed and that sort of thing now the field block if you right click it you'll see here it tells you how many blocks in each direction uh, the field is going to be so you can select different sizes for it and there's a gap in the middle here so with that gap what you want to do is let's say you want this to be a wheat farm right click and put the wheat seeds in there and then it will tell your farmer once you hire them and again to hire a person you go to the block like this right click manage workers choose someone to hire like that um, and then you can your farmer will then know that this is where he or she is going to be doing the farming and also that it's going to be for wheat seeds so that is how you handle that okay a few final starting tips and tricks first of all if you press u you'll see you get this screen right here so what you can do is let's say i'm stood right here this is my town hall if i hit u and hit add i can add a waypoint and we'll call this home so i always know how to get home now over here you can choose all different colors for it and um, also you can put in the coordinates manually if you want to just set a coordinate somewhere but i hit confirm there it is right there what this means is as i walk away you'll see there we go it now shows up it shows up on my mini map in the top left you can see up there and it also shows up when i'm looking at it no matter where i am on the map no matter how far away i go it will still show up if i'm looking in the right direction there it is right so um, these can be very useful to mark like useful biomes that you may need definitely very useful to mark your home and that sort of thing um, so again that's you to do that on here as well you can disable it so if it's getting in the way when you're walking around you can disable it and then when you need it just go ahead and enable it again like that um, the teleportation thing is not something that you'll be able to do in survival that's just because I'm in creative mode right now so I'm technically op um, and you can also delete them and stuff as well but these are very useful to have for sure uh, the other thing that I would highly recommend you look at early game is this over here which is bookmarking items so what that means is if i want to build like let's say i want a resident torch i can hit that and then just bookmark the recipe so that i can build it so let's go ahead i'll get a crafting bench and show you this in action but it's just going to make your um hold on crafting bench there we go uh, it's going to make your early game so much easier to do so if we go in here and let's grab let's see like some wood right so let's go planks here get a load of you if i right click this now i can hit the chest shift click that and it will make as many as possible and because we had 64 that is eight and then we can make up our hs so i've bookmarked items that i'm using a lot of in my town which is a sandstone town which is why you're seeing all this uh, and the cactus fence and stuff like that but i do recommend you do that so the way that you do that is you get the item so let's say you want to bookmark a um well let's see it'll have to be something i haven't bookmarked yet so let's say you want to bookmark a boat right 
you probably wouldn't want to put mark about but let's say you did so if we left click on the oak boat and then what's hovering over it, if i press a you'll see it comes over here on the left hand side so now i can use that to like i did just before the chess and if i want to get rid of it i just hover over hit a again and it goes away because you will accidentally bookmark a lot of items when you're playing or at least i do but then i am a bit of a noob so <laughs> maybe that's just me one other item i forgot to mention in my video that i'm just going to throw in there now is the backpack you see i have a large backpack here if i open that up uh first of all you have all of this storage space which is incredibly cool but look at this backpack exception guys <laughs> you can have backpacks within backpacks which means they are essentially infinite storage now to make up a backpack you can see here a small backpack is made just like this a medium one would be a small backpack in place of the string with all the other stuff still needed and a large one would be the medium one in place of the small one and uh, all the other stuff still needed so that is how you make it as you can see you can make different colors and things as well now one little point to make about them as well mine is currently enchanted with tombstone soulbound so what that means is if i die I will keep my backpack so anything that's in here including all the other backpacks will still be in my inventory if I die so I do highly recommend that you look at getting the backpack and also putting that enchantment on it so apologies for forgetting that in the uh, original video but I've just added it in now so today's video was designed to give you guys a flavor of what it's like to get started on mine colonies and hopefully if you're new to the game just show you some things that you perhaps didn't know in terms of how to get started now if you want to see like more in depth of like how to play this game that sort of thing I have several series on my channel one of which is current and uh following that will give you like a good playthrough i also do live streams where i'm there all the time uh, showing everything on cam of course and you guys can ask me loads of questions there that i can answer in real time so my twitch will be linked below if you're interested in that also i will be launching a mine colony server in a few months time that you guys will be able to join so if you're interested in that i highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel to keep posted about it um, or you could follow me on discord as well i've got my discord link down in the description too um, but it'd be great to have a few of you there for that now if i didn't explain anything properly today please do shoot me a question down in the comments comment section and I will do my very best to answer any of your concerns but I really hope this video helped and if it did please do consider liking and subscribing it truly is greatly appreciated uh, but for now I just want to say thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one so did this video help you out today guys let me know down in the comments if this helped let me know if you're into mine colonies if you're new to it why you watch this video I'd love to hear a little bit of feedback from you all I really hope it helped you out a little bit and again thank you for watching